What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. So, um, I'm gonna put a link to uh, this poll. I'm gonna find an article talking about this latest poll uh, from I think it's AB. I think it's an ABC News Washington Post poll. And this poll is showing how far Joe Biden is falling as far as favorability in this uh, country. And I'm, I'm just going to say this. The election is still over a year away, right? Still 14 months away, all right? But, I, but having said that, though, I remember saying when his poll numbers first started dropping back in the summer of 2021, I remember saying back then, oh, well, the election is three years away. So, you know, it's still a lot of time. This could turn around. Then I remember saying two years away. Okay. His numbers have not changed. If anything, they've gotten worse. You know, it's funny. When Joe Biden first entered office, he had these high... Reagan, Reagan-esque, FDR-esque approval ratings. And you always heard MSNBC and CNN talking about him. And you remember when Trump was president, they always talked about his low, up, low approval numbers. But you notice they don't talk about Biden's on TV too much, do they? So anyway, according to this poll, and I'm just going off of memory here, so I, I might be a little bit off. Biden is in a big big hole right now. Um, only 37% of Americans approve of his performance as president. 56% disapproves. That's a 19 net disapproval rating. Um, that's terrible. Uh, a president with a 37% approval rating uh, on election day is going to get blown out. It's going to get blown out. And this poll right here is indicative of that. As you can see in this poll right here, right now, hypothetically, Donald Trump will get 51% of the vote in an election held today. Now, of course, there's a plus minus in these polls. I don't know the plus minus off the top of hand. Usually it's like three and a half, maybe three points or what have you. But generally speaking, no matter how you look at it, 5142, it could be as close as, what is that? It could be as close as 4845, which is still a, a decent lead, or it could be as big as 5439, which would be a 14 point, uh, 15 point blowout landslide. And you got to remember something, too. Nationally, a Republican has not won the popular vote. In a national president's election since 2004. And even including that, the last time before that that a Republican won the popular vote was in 1988 when his father, George H.W. Bush, beat Mike Dukakis. So since 1988, only one time, 2004, has a Republican won the popular vote. So, but that's not the only time that a Republican has won the election. So nationally, right now, because of the fact that Democrats dominate in these, um, uh, they dominate in what geographically looks small, but these uh, population centers where millions of people live, right? Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, um, you know, because of their domination in these areas, other states too. Philadelphia, if I haven't said Philadelphia, I think that I have though. Um, because of this, they dominate in big states. So therefore, they always have this edge, popular vote wise. So even though Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by 3 million in 2016, she lost to Electoral College. So for Trump to be up theoretically nine points, in an election where he could still win if he loses the popular vote by a couple points. That's telling. That really kind of indicates a big landslide for Republicans. 
Like the, off the top of my head, man, I like I, I can't see them. I can't see how each state is trending in these polls. But I wouldn't be surprised if a polling like this would give Trump forty states, at least forty states. I mean, it would be a the biggest electoral landslide since Reagan in eighty four. Um, and he's he's polling terribly, not just his individual performance. His handling of the economy is in the toilet. I think it's like, in, I think it's 30%. His handling of border control, I think it's like 30%. His handling of foreign policy, I think, is in like the upper 20s. He's doing horribly. I mean, he makes Jimmy Carter look like FDR. The perception of him, He's in, the perception of most, most voters right now of Joe Biden is that he's incompetent, he's too old, and he's in over his head, and they don't have any confidence in his vice president. Now, I don't know who Trump's going to pull or pick. Me, personally, I think the best candidate for him would be somebody like Tulsi Gabbard right now. I think Tulsi Gabbard would be best. Um... I'm, I was thinking Tim Scott, but this is the problem. The Republicans don't feel comfortable and never have been comfortable putting power in the hands of certain people or even uh, putting them in a position where they can get power. Right? Um, both parties are like this. Uh... They'll pick someone who might be technically a minority, but they have to be acceptable in appearance and others, other things. Uh, both parties do this. Remember when that scandal happened with gov the uh, former governor, Ralph Northam, with the blackface, and it looked like he was going to resign? But if he resigned, that made it likely that his lieutenant governor Justin Fairfax was going to become the governor who was a black man. Not some mixed guy from another country. Not not knocking him. Not knocking people that, that, that... But I'm just saying. When that happened, what happened? You saw that rehashing of the scandal that he had and that knocked uh, Ralph Northam's uh, you know, scandal off the news, off the map. And it pretty much saved his political career. And it prevented Justin Fairfax from getting any momentum to become governor because they don't have that shit, right? <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I've kind of looked at the Tim Scott thing, Vivak Ramaswamy. I don't think they're going to become vice president. I, I, I really doubt it. I think the best options are probably going to be maybe the South Dakota governor, Tulsi Gabbard. And maybe if she toned down her rhetoric, Carrie Lake, because she is from a, a swing state of Arizona. But Marjorie Taylor Greene, way too, she's way too out there, man. But yeah, you look at this uh, polling, and it's not just this poll. It's not just this poll. It's every subsequent poll that's been out the last three years. Biden has, for the most part, been polling horrible. It's just that he's been trending worse and worse and worse. And the Americans are not happy. Um, you can just get a sense that people feel like that we're not in a good place right now. A lot of people, it's not just the economy or the perception that the economy isn't really good. It's not that. It's just an uneasy feeling. Um, tensions are high. Racial tensions are high. Uh, people don't like the direction this country is going in. It's like Biden is just a... a, a, a a mat, you know, that people of certain special groups just wipe their feet with and walk all over and get what they want while, you know, Americans feel like this country's heading in the wrong direction in a lot of different ways. And not just domestic issues either, or social issues. Um, you you see what's going over in, in Russia, you see what's going on in Ukraine, North Korea. All of a sudden, North Korea and Russia are allies. We didn't see that when Trump was president. We didn't see this. This, 
goes to show you that the Biden the Biden administration's foreign policy is just totally obsessed with Ukraine, and that's it. Um, you can't have a country like Russia, right, who is powerful, right? Then you have North Korea, a rogue nation with foreign, with uh, nuclear capabilities. You don't want to attempt any type of relationship with this country, but you see Russia's doing that. This is exactly why, I know some people don't aren't fond of Richard Nixon, but this is exactly why the Nixon administration reached out to China back in 1972. Because although China was a communist nation, like then Soviet Union, they had broken off. They had uh, broken away from the Soviet Union, had become isolated. And isolated from the world, and that could be dangerous. But he recognized that having an ally in China this nation that could one day be powerful, and they became powerful, China. Um, it was great to have an ally in China who was so close to the Soviet Union, uh, ge you know, geographically, but for us to have an ally in, the, in that part of the world uh, was very, very intelligent, and it put Russia on the defensive which is why in a couple of years after we opened relations with China, the Soviet Union, I might sometimes say Russia, but I mean Soviet Union, became more agreeable as far as, you know, reducing their stockpile of weapons uh, and became more agreeable in trying to negotiate the United States when it comes to, uh, you know, not just... Uh, slowing down the proliferation of nuclear weapons, but just toning down the flames of, of tension and, and cooling off the, you know, you know, keeping the Cold War from getting too cold, is what I'm basically trying to say. But now you got a situation with Biden, right? You got a dude who China, we don't have a relationship with China like we used to. That's gone. Now you got North Korea allying with Russia, right? As far as weaponry and all of these things, right? And we already see that China is allied with North Korea. So by extension, you, you could have a triangle of South Korea, China, and North Korea that could start acting aggressively toward the United States. I mean, China already own so much of our country any goddamn way, right? Um, we, our, our, it's just that our stock in the world is just done, man. It's just gone. Nobody respects us. The world looks at the United States as a bunch of pussies, man. They look at us like a bunch of fucking pussies. Do you see some of the people that represent the United States in the Biden administration? I'm not even going to go into detail, but I'm, I'm talking about some of these people that represent the United States as far as diplomats who represent a certain community, right? And I'm not going to go too far into this because this is YouTube, but they don't respect us, okay? There used to be an element of fear when it came to other countries looking at the United States. Now they laugh at us. And they laugh at our feeble, incompetent, senile president it had nothing to do with fucking party lines they just don't res fucking respect us man and I'm not saying Trump is great I'm not but man I mean you just gotta admit it bro we still have the same fucking problems we still have the same fucking problems we had the media just don't want to act uh, act on talking about it because they want to try to ignore it but we still have the same problem we still have cops blowing kids heads off Chicago is getting worse. It's funny, when Trump was president, these things were always brought up. We still having George Floyd situations. We still having the same shit going on. Why is it not being talked about? Why is, put on the, why is it being put on the back burner? Why is it whenever a Democrat's in the White House, 
all of a sudden we're not on it on our job on the defensive uh, asking something from from these administra administration officials you know something speak out about it address it nope that's our fault collectively that's our fault that's our fault man um, we gotta get this dude the fuck up out of here. I'm not saying Trump is the answer, but we gotta get him the fuck up out of here, and we have to step up collectively. You and I, me too. We gotta step up, and we have to sh display our political power. We can't just go out there and let them dictate to us. We have to dictate to one of these fucking parties. Or create our own part. Something has to give. We got to play king make, king maker. We got to show some type of power. And in my opinion, even if it takes us holding our vote and forcing a Democrat's hand, we got to find something. Because what's going on right now is not working. It hasn't worked historically. Even back in the day after Reconstruction, when we were voting Republican, we kept waiting for some white savior to hit the White House and save us. It never happened. The only time things ever change for us is when we take action. When we force their hands. So that's all I got to say about it, man. Tell what you guys think.